So back in July, I was in a hotel room in Orlando with my three daughters. I was about to strangle the three of them. Um, I was about a breath away from making them walk home back to Texas. And Kim sends me a text message that says, check your email. I sent you your topic for the women's event in September. So I could hardly wait to find out what I got to talk about. And I checked my email, and my topic was helping your children make right choices. <laughs> I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I wanted to go sit in the corner and suck my thumb. Um, so let me just start by saying my children do not always make right choices. And um, as much as I wish they did, you know, deep down, uh, that's just not how it is. I don't make right choices every day of my life, even today, as an adult. And so it's very unrealistic to think that our kids are always going to do the right thing, no matter how they're raised, right or wrong. Um, they're human beings. They have free will. And um, there's only so much we can do as parents uh, to help them along the way. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I graduated from high school back in 1995 and found out I was expecting a baby. I was terrified. Um, my husband at the time, or my, my boyfriend at the time, um, was about to leave to go into the Marine Corps and I was going away to college and we never planned to get married. I was never planning to marry him. Um, I had always felt like we both had way too much baggage and um, just been raised in very unhealthy homes. We fought a lot, um, even as when we were dating, we fought um, probably more than we got along. And so um, the plan was I was going to go to college and he was going to boot camp. And about a week before that, I found out that I was pregnant. And so I have a great appreciation for like this um, women's center where we are because I know how that feels to be so scared and to feel like you you don't know what to do. You know, you're, you feel like your life has changed forever. You know, you contemplate all of your choices and what can I do? What are my options? What do I want to do? What's the best thing to do? And um, I did not have a supportive um, family. My mother uh, was a drug addict. My parents divorced when I was 13. My dad, I think, finally had just kind of had enough. The marriage had just, um, you know, had gone on for too long. So when I was 13, my brother was 16, my parents divorced, um, and my dad got full custody of us. So I was raised by my dad kind of through my teenage years. Um, but when I told my dad I was pregnant, um, you know, his first thing was, are you going to get married? Uh, because that was his answer uh, for me. So I really struggled for months about what was I going to do. And um, when I was about six months pregnant, my husband had been, or my boyfriend had been gone, and he didn't know whether, he didn't know what I was going to do. He didn't know when he got out of boot camp, if I would answer the phone, if he called. He didn't know if we could still be together, if I had found somebody else. He didn't know what I was going to do, and I didn't know what I was going to do. So um, I finally just got to a point that I was just so scared that I just decided, I guess I'll just marry him. And don't know. I, I don't know what else to do. You know, my mother was not going to be able to help me, and my dad really did not seem like he wanted to help me. So um, we got married uh, in December of 1995. This year will be 21 years that we've been married to each other. Uh, some of those years have been good. Some have been very hard. We've had great moments. We've had hard moments. We now have four children. My children are 20, almost 17, 14, and 11. All that being said, I think my greatest insecurity in life was my ability to be a good mom because the odds were stacked against me. I was young. The chances that we would stay together were slim to none. I felt very ill-equipped to know what it means to be a good mom because I didn't have a good supportive mother. I think my mom loved me, um, still does, and as much as she knows how. 
but she had a very, very serious addiction that she never really um, got control of. And so when she was in her early 50s, I had to put her in a nursing home because she just had way too many um, overdoses and you know, she finally went too long without oxygen to her brain one time and so she has a lot of brain damage. So um, as a young mom, I was so incredibly insecure. All I wanted was to be a good mom, but I had no idea how to be a good mom. And I found myself doing things that I wasn't proud of. I just, I found myself, you know, not being who I wanted to be, but desperately trying to. And I wasn't in Christ um, back then. Uh, the, when my oldest daughter was just a few years old, I didn't know the Lord. And so um, by the time I had two kids, my husband and I had filed for divorce. And that was kind of when I started going to church. That was when I started a relationship with the Lord. And everything sort of shifted at that time in, in my mind and in my heart. And I think about when I was a child and there was this amusement park um, in town and they had a glass maze. It was, a, it was one of the attractions. You went through this glass maze and you couldn't see anything because it was just crystal clear. So you just had to like bump into walls and you'd go left or you'd go right or you'd you know, go straight. And I felt like going through life, even as a teenager and as a young adult and as a young mother, not knowing Christ was sort of like going through that maze. It's like, I don't know, left or right, I don't know, just pick one. Might be the right way, might be the wrong way, you might hit a wall, you might not. But once I became a Christian, I had God's word and I had his help. And I no longer felt like I have no clue what I'm doing. And so even though uh, parenting doesn't come with um, a manual and uh, you know we you know our training is on the job right you know you learn things with your first you do things different with your second by the time you get to the fourth you know God loved the fourth child <laughs> <laughs> so you know my kids have not always made the right choices and um, as a mom, it's like, okay, what is my job? What is my role here um, in helping them? Knowing that I don't want to raise my kids the way I was raised, but I don't really know what, what to do. So I think there's things that we could probably all agree on that are good things to do. Lead by example, be present, you know, have conversations with your kids. But I think there's a couple of things that I would say that have really um, that I've just had to cling to over the years. Um, one thing is, and I made a, a lot of mistakes with my oldest child because I did not allow her to make a lot of her own decisions because I was just terrified that she would make the wrong choices. So I made all of her choices for her, like her whole life. And I found that when she became an adult, she doesn't really have the confidence to make choices for herself. And she will constantly, just tell me what you think I should do. And I'm like, you've got to decide, you've got to choose, but because when she was younger, I didn't really let her choose, you know, even when she was in high school, you know, after the football games, no, you're not going to Whataburger, you're coming home, because I don't trust the kids, and I don't trust the situation, I don't trust this, I don't trust. so I didn't allow her to be in situations a lot where she had to choose, and she had to learn herself how to make choices, um, so that's one thing I've tried to do a little bit differently with my other kids. Um, but two really important things that I think um, apply to everyone, and, I, and this is really whether your kids are still at home or your kids are grown. Um, because no matter how old we are, we still need our parents. So just know that if your kids are grown, you don't know what I would give to have a mom still encourage me, still pray for me, still call me. So do not think that you're insignificant in your grown children's lives because they need you and they do appreciate the things that you do with a sincerity of heart. So number one um, is knowing the word and do not feel bad or guilty if you didn't start this years ago and you didn't raise your kids from the time they were babies to know Jesus and you didn't do family devotionals around the dinner table. You know, I always had this idea that um, 
raising my kids to know God meant we're going to sit around the dinner table every night and dad's going to lead the, the Bible study and we're going to do these devotionals with our kids and you know that really never happened I mean if we ever tried it it didn't really go <laughs> so over time I just had to find different ways and I was constantly changing my approach and what I was doing and because I always felt like you know I don't get to choose Christ for them, but I get to choose my actions. And I want to know when I go to bed at night that I did my best and that I tried to teach them about God, teach them right from wrong. They get to choose. They get to choose just like I got to choose. But I want to know that um, that they know the truth, that they do know the truth. They may not accept the Lordship of Christ in their life, but they will know the truth. And so, little things that I did uh, when they were younger, we did this thing called Junior Bible Quiz. Has anybody ever, anybody know what Junior Bible Quiz is? I love Junior Bible Quiz. Um, your kids just learn, a, they have these flashcards. They actually join teams, and these teams like compete with buzzers on Bible trivia and things like that. So they learn a lot of scriptures, and they learn a lot of just Bible facts and figures and, and things about the Bible. So we spent a couple of summers studying junior Bible quiz and competing on teams and doing things like that. Um, we would take their flashcards with us in the car when we would go places, and they would complain. They would. They'd be like, oh, my God, JBQ. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to this day, they still know those scriptures, you know, because we learned them. Sometimes I would offer them rewards if they were trying to earn money for vacation or something. I would, like, for every ten scriptures you memorize, you know, five dollars or for vacation or something like that um, as I got older you know I had to change my approach because the 14 year old is not gonna study JBQ flashcards anymore so I'd have to like revisit okay God what can I do now how can I uh, teach them and just constantly put it before them I think that's what it is it's just putting it in front of them equipping them so when my daughter was like in middle school, high school, I would find different things off the internet and I would print them out and I would leave them next to her breakfast in the morning. And it was up to her whether she wanted to read it or not, whether she chose to read it or not. She, you know, sometimes she would take it with her to school. I'd be like, take it to school. I don't know what, how often she read them or didn't read them, but it was just putting it in front of them. And then this last summer, um, my girls are now 14 and 16. So I thought, you know, I'm going to let them choose something for themselves this time. So I took them to, like, a Christian bookstore over the summer. We went to lunch. We went to Starbucks. And I took them kind of like on a little shopping spree at a Christian bookstore. And I let them walk around the store and find things that really jumped out to them. So they got a new Bible. They, you know, picked out a prayer journal or whatever it was that really, you know, one wanted a prayer journal, another one wanted else a coloring book with scriptures and things like that so it's just like constantly putting stuff in front of them um, but knowing that they have to decide whether or not they're going to really let that be a part of their life on the first day of school I always give them a new um, you know those little things that like are the little daily thing you flip and it has a scripture or, or something for the day um, I always wondered would they actually use those and I go and I go to the room sometimes and I find that they're usually always within a day or two of, of what the day is. So they really do. They really like those um, as well. Um, but all that to say, they still do things that just make me crazy. You know, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Why? I have not raised you to be this way. And um, so uh, other than knowing the word, which is very important, and we can start that at any time, Know, my youngest daughter, or my oldest daughter, I mean, I didn't know Christ until she was five years old. So, you know, just think about how did she grow up when she was younger. But the other thing that's incredibly important is teaching them to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I think that is um, just something we don't talk about enough. You know, because sometimes we talk about Holy Spirit and, you know, it's like, well, what is that? Is that speaking in tongues and all this stuff? You know, the Holy Spirit, God says when you became a Christian, I, he put his spirit inside of us. And so if our children have a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit is inside of them. 
And so as they go through their life, I can't be there all the time.